for Pat's sake. Public protection? Okay. I think Alderman Vander. Well, do you have documents yet? Bill has them. Okay. Well, a little cleanup work here before we get started. Then this evening, we're waiting for a couple documents. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of, or if you got a call from the governor's office today. Did everyone get a call? That he'll be in town tomorrow? 245? To Land Park Community Center. He will be signing some bills. I would hope everyone can make it. 245, he'll be down there somewhere. So hopefully everyone can make it. He will be signing bills, uh, some legislation that uh, Senator Lightpam did, and I believe some that Representative Van Akron had. So, and I'm not sure about Representative Costello if he had any in there either, but uh, he'll be signing. And that goes for new aldermen sitting out here too. You're more than welcome to come down uh, tomorrow and uh, join us. So. The other thing I'd like to say, congratulations to, well, welcome to the new alderman. We have one with us this evening. And congratulations to the alderman who got back in. Congratulations, all you guys and come once. Good, good job. And I'd like to thank Alderman Moody and the other alderman, alderman Doyle's not here this evening. And Alderman Winninger is not here this evening, but thank you for the time you spent on the council with us. It's been a pleasure. Okay, with that now, are we ready? Does anyone have any questions or anything they'd like to discuss before we get moving forward? <laughs> All of them mind to me. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I bet Steve can answer this question right away. We all have this invitation from Mark Cinema. Yeah. Can we go to that? I mean, we're getting free tickets and food. She, uh, Steve doesn't have that. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Only we aldermen are getting yeah. this free movie. Mark Cinema sent a letter out to all the aldermen uh, if they would like to come to a free movie <coughs> to see their big screen TV that they the right. new one. And what else is on there? Uh, well, and we get um, popcorn and a soft drink. <laughs> if it what? isn't over a dollar, you're safe. Right, but, but of course the ticket is. Right. <coughs> right. No. I believe it's 15. <coughs> I don't know what the practice of Alderman has been over the years. I know at one time the theater used to provide movie passes to the Alderman on an annual basis. I don't know if they still do that. Uh, I can say that uh, when I started, uh, I was offered one and I declined it. I, I guess uh, I can't give you, you know, I, I can say what I would do would be not to accept it uh, unless they're making that offer to the public as a whole, you know, but if they're providing this to aldermen uh, uh, separate from the general public, I guess I would uh, err on the side of uh, avoiding any potential conflict to the event that Marcus Cable were to come for some, you know, applying for some conditional use permit that, you know, arguably uh, uh, this could influence you perhaps in your decision. I guess that's, that's all I can say on the spur of the moment. Uh, I, I don't know what the monetary value is, uh, but uh, it's probably not real great, but I would caution against accepting free tickets to the local theater. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alderman Perez. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Just for the benefit of the three new aldermen that uh, were elected, one being here and two, which I think will probably be watching TV, uh, if, if you would announce when they get sworn in. Oh, yes. Uh, good point. April 20th, you'll be sworn in as a new alderman. That is Tuesday evening, April 19th. Uh, two weeks from tonight is our last council meeting of the old council. Their agendas will be ready to come. Go ahead. Their agendas will be ready the Friday before. Come to my office and get them, but I, I need to see all the, all the persons elect before the new ones um, prior to the first meeting so I can give you certain instructions that I give everybody. <laughs> and they're not bad. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll call the 25th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Excuse. Roth? Here. Manning? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Moody? I couldn't hear, there was a cough. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Anken? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangerman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Excused. 14 present. Quorum's present. Pledge of Allegiance? Minutes. Oh, approval of minutes, excuse minutes me. First. Alderman Groff, approval of minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move that we approve the minutes of the previous common council meeting as entered on the record. Second. Moved and second that the minutes of the previous council meeting be stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Berg is going to lead Bauman. us in, or Bowman, mm -hmm. is leading us in a pledge. I asked him, I didn't know anybody else. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Resonation, Steve. This is a letter to the mayor from Monroe Gerke, advising that uh, due to Ill health, Ill health, it's with deep regret that he submits his resignation as a member of the Board of Review. Uh, and he thanks the mayor and thanks the council uh, for their friendship and assistance over the years. Signed by Monroe Gerke. That can be accepted and filed. And uh, also a letter from Thomas Marini, Jr. Uh, to the mayor advising that uh, uh, of his intent to resign from the City Board of Appeals and Board of Housing Appeals effective April 1, 2004, uh, because he's accepted a job promotion within U.S. Bank, which requires a move to Cincinnati, Ohio. That can be placed on file. Public forum? No one. Okay. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, items 25-1 through 25-8, I would move that all ROs and communications be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass all resolutions and general ordinances. It's been moved and seconded that all ROs from documents 25-1 through 25-28, correct? All ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and ordinance be put upon their passage, Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, pull out 2510 and ask our finance director, Steve Gebhardt, to speak to that and uh, to District 12 and let us know how that district's been doing. And. Uh, District 12 is located in the uh, general area of Niagara and 8th Street. Um, the district was formed in the year 2000. Uh, the reason for the audit at this time is that the majority of the expenditures uh, have been completed by 2002 and under the state uh, regulations that is required to have an audit at that time. Um, you're, you'll see in there that there is um, some 
a deficit at, in the capital project fund uh, at that time because of the initial expenditures uh, being required. The city did make an advance from the general fund that is booked there as a liability to be paid back in the future. Um, so it shows a, a deficit in the fund balance at that point in time. But the district, uh, as of this year, it uh, had tax increment over $94,000 and uh, it had principal and interest payments on the debt service of 59000 So there is an excess of $34,000 of uh, difference that would be able to pay back um, the advance and in the future years, of course, be able to pay, pay the remaining advance. Um, so at, at this point in time, uh, you know, I, we're looking like within a couple of years that the advance will be fully repaid. Excellent. Anything else? No. If there's no other questions, Pat, would you call her over? <coughs> Bird. Aye. Kone. Aye. Goff. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfeich. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2529 through 31 to be referred. 2532 by the city Cal by the city clerk submitting the special audit committee report to the com common council, assisting the result of their investigation into the financing <coughs> of Blue Harbor. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I believe the correct motion on this document is to accept and file the report of officer. Move to second, accept and file a report of officer. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, I think there's been a lot of public interest in the financing of the Blue Harbor project. And this report clearly details that uh, to the extent that is possible under, under current laws and, and that we could work out in a, in a good contract <coughs> that the project is very well protected. Uh, perhaps if the council doesn't mind, there's some, I could read the high points of this and I think that would address possibly some of the public's concerns. You have the floor. So on that first, uh, I'd like to read the, in the report in its entirety, but I think if, uh, if I start with the introduction that came from the Special Audit Committee, and this is it. It says, this report constitutes the results of our investigation into the financing of Blue Harbor as it relates to the city of Sheboygan's portion of the investment in the project. We were asked by the mayor and the common council to address various concerns. This committee reviewed the development agreement and summaries of other pertinent documents prepared and, this, and the summaries of other pertinent documents prepared by city of Sheboygan staff. We also interviewed persons with relevant information in compiling this report, all as related in the printed minutes, which I believe everyone did receive on a regular basis. The findings of the committee, the city of Sheboygan's obligation on the convention center and parking lot is not to exceed $8.2 million. Sheboygan will own this portion of the Blue Harbor development. That means the citizens and the city of Sheboygan will own it. Thus, the facilities themselves are collateral against any default in the guarantees of the developer. Number two, Sheboygan has put in place cost controls such that the obligations will not exceed $8.2 million and less requested by Sheboygan. All of the construction contracts were described to us as fixed price contracts. There is no indication at this time that Sheboygan will require or request additional spending on the convention center and parking lot. Item three, Sheboygan has implemented a payment system which requires that all requests for payment must be within the budget guidelines. Further, the construction budget categories are closed meaning that any savings in construction costs in category A cannot then be shifted to cover overages in category B. Item four, the developer has leased the convention center for 15 years under an operating agreement, which also has five-year options. The developer has guaranteed project projected room tax payments totally, or actually project room tax payments totally of 25 million $944,247 through 20028 which amount 
is about $9 million more than the debt cost, including interest. <coughs> Item 5. There are a series of guarantee devices, including a $1 million guarantee deposit, a $500,000 reserve fund, along with a series of personal and corporate guarantees. These devices can be released upon meeting certain performance requirements. Sheboygan agreed to loan $4 million to the developer for the resort project. There is no provision which would require additional lending by Sheboygan. There are private lenders in place for the resort project and the related condominium project. The developer has an equity interest in the development of $7.6 million. The developer entered into a reimbursement agreement for the full amount of the city loan and a portion of the public improvements. There are guaranteed property tax payments through 2018 of $16,419,000. TIF funds will be used to repay the loan and for 50% of the infrastructure improvements, which include parking lots and sidewalks. The remaining 50% is paid for by the balance of the development project. An additional $20 million of Phase two development is needed within the TIF district to meet debt service obligations related to all TIF expenditures. That's in the future. A change in ownership does not remove the tax payments obligation nor the personal guarantees. At this point, infrastructure costs are below projections. The assumptions upon which the repayment to Sheboygan are based are that the room tax will be generated and collected and that the property taxes will be paid. Any failure in the realization of these assumptions is covered by the personal and corporate guarantees. Sheboygan officials re represented to us that the business model assumptions and projections are conservative and while no project of this magnitude is risk free, the risks attendant to this project are well accounted for in the business model developed by the city finance director. And in, in closing, it's the conclusions. Number one, based on Sheboygan's business model for Blue Harbor, Sheboygan's taxpayers are protected from unanticipated losses as much that, that is possible given the inherent risks with a development project of this type. The model developed by the finance director, who has over 20 years of experience in public financing, is based on reasonable assumptions. The private lenders, which have a much larger financial exposure, are paid after the city receives its property tax payments. There are reasonable protections against unanticipated losses in the form of various guarantees described above. An audit would cost in the range of $10,000 to $20,000. Given the nature of the project performance to date, that everything is coming in at or under projected costs, and given the nature of the payment request budget format, the cost of an audit is not necessary, nor would it be a worthwhile investment of tax dollars, and that is the conclusion of the Special Audit Committee. I guess what I'd like to do is first thank Attorney William T. Winkle, Attorney Robert Wells, James Graven, Alan Rudnick, and of course the Reverend Greg Welton for their service to the city of Sheboygan in this endeavor. They spent close to four months working on their own time without pay for this. And uh, I think these individuals have done an exceptional job in reviewing the financial aspects of the Blue Harbor Project, and I thank them. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Rainflesh. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we had the opportunity to take several tours of the uh, project going up down there and ask questions about the other investments that we have going on down there, the interest in there. I understand there are several parties interested in the Rice Building now. We have a lot of proposals for the rest of the undeveloped land right now, none of which would be occurring right now if it were not for uh, the initial investment in the Blue Harbor Project. Um, clearly, the, the, the money the taxpayers spent, we're going to get back in time. Um, it's like any other project infrastructure. It does cost, so we're not going to get directly back. But over time, we're going to get it back in other ways. So I'm very proud of the project and very happy to see it going on right now. Uh, I do, however, still object to the language that we use on line six. Sheboygan agreed to a loan of $4 million. 
I still think this is our investment in that, and I think we need to make it clear to the public that that is our partnership with the project. Nothing that would be going on down there would be occurring if it wasn't for the $4 million that we gave them. Now, they do agree to pay it back by, as it says in number 12, repayment to Sheboygan are based that the room tax will be generated and collected, and the property taxes will be paid. That would occur anyway. Um, we're going to get that, we're going to get the, the, what they said, the $25 million through 2028. We have guarantees there so that if they do not pay that, they'll give us a personal guarantees. Um, I'm proud of the project. Uh, I think what we need to explain to the public, though, is that I, that still is our investment. We are going to get that back long term. Uh, I'm very proud of the project, and uh, I'm proud to see that it's already generated income to the city, and we'll continue to do so as well. Thank you. And you're right. That is for future investment in our community, long-range planning. And it will <coughs> generate a lot more than $25 million back by the time we're done with that area. Okay, if there's no other discussion, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2533 will hold for 2542. 2534 through 41 to be referred. <clears throat> Forget it. 2542 along with 2533 by Alderman Bauman, authorizing entering into a contract for the proposed parking lots of South Pier Development. Alderman Bauman. Thank you. I pushed my button a little sooner. I apologize. Um, I'd like to ask for suspension of the rules, please. Second. Moved and second for suspension. Is there any objections? Okay, Your Honor, there, the reason for the suspension, of course, is so that we can get these parking lots started already because of the fact that uh, spring has sprung and we really need the things to get moving. So uh, I then would like to accept and uh, file the report of officer and then move that the resolution be put upon this passage. Alderman Bauman, just to clarify for the public and stuff, we have parking lot South Pier. You or, or Tom want to tell them which parking lots we're talking about so they don't think we're paving the whole South Pier? Or, you know, oh, Tom, go ahead. Be specific here. It includes the uh, cul de sac off the east end of South Pier Drive. It's about 74 stalls, I believe. It includes 33 stalls that would be. Uh, near the slips on the South Pier Marina, and also for improvements to the uh, parking lot at the Rice Building, and which that one we're going to hold off on that till we get through the RFPs, but we will tackle the other two. We need to be done by June 1st for the opening. Okay. Tom, as long as you're up there, can you tell them a little bit about the concrete that's going in that we oh, saw? Yeah. Uh, they started uh, Tuesday with the stamped concrete in the plaza areas. Uh, it's a colored concrete to look like slate. Uh, they. It's a greenish color. They'll throw a, a black powder secondary color over it, and they have forms that they lay over the concrete and work in there, and it looks beautiful. It's just like uh, someone spent hundreds of thousands of dollars cutting and laying slate in there. If you have time, stop down and take a look just off the promenade on the south plaza. It look, it's, looks great. It's a very nice detail. Good, it does. I looked at it today. So. Thank you. We have a motion before us. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bonnie? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2543 through 45 will lie over. 2546 by Alderman Bowman, authorizing enter contract for the 2004 concrete sidewalk program. Alderman Bowman. Thank you again, Your Honor. I'd like to ask for suspension one more time, please. Second. Um, go ahead. Moved and second for suspension. Is there any objections? Okay. If there isn't, Alderman Baum, would you explain why? Yes, sir. The, uh, again, spring has sprung. I'm going to say that one more time. And the reason being is that uh, we need to get our concrete sidewalk construction projects under um, actually rolling. So needless to say, the uh, contractors are more than willing to get out there and get this going, so we'd like to get this going as soon as possible. We will also need, there's a, re a resume of bids, isn't there? I'm looking for it. Be 2541. That'll have to be acted on also. Okay, separately? 
No, with it. You okay. can file it at the same time. Well, then with that, then I would like to uh, make the motion in to accept and file the report of officer and uh, pass the attached resolution 2546 for the concrete construction of the sidewalks. Second. A motion that been made and seconded to pass the resolution and file the report of office. If there's another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. The rest, 2547 through 52, to be referred. 2553. Will lie over. 2554 by protection and safety recommending dying denying beverage license. 6319 based on her voluntary withdrawal from the application process and denying beverage operator's license. 6316 based on his voluntary withdrawal of his application. His lack of candor and the, on the application and his non -cooperation, cooperation with the committee. Alderman Vanderwill. Uh, Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. And to den deny the two licenses. Also, um, I'd ask if the applicants are here. They're not, Your Honor. We have a motion before us to accept and deny on 2554. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Montemayor, Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stephan, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Bauman, Berg, Bonnet, Groff. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2555 will be referred. 2556 to be referred. Can I? Can oh, I? go ahead. Forgot to mention any of these referrals. If you're not meeting any more this council year, you have to tell me that they're going to the next council year. So right now, there's only one document that's going to the new council. That was uh, 2555. So if you want any other ones going to the new council, you have to let me know which ones they are. Okay. Don, on 2556, there's some language that has to be changed on that one. Are you correct? Yeah, in, in the of ours, we only approved one officer to be hired and the other two to be looked at when the budget time comes up. You're not already uh, saying three officers are going to be hired by 204. But I believe that doesn't say that. It does not say no. that. Yes, it does. You want to approve one officer now? One officer, if finance can find the money, <laughs> is what we send it to finance for. And we'll two officers it. are going to be looked at at the time of budget time. Okay. I need a second on that. Second. Okay. We have a motion before us, or you need an amendment first? This, I vote on the amendment. All, everybody understand the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then it can just be referred. Okay, then it will be referred as amended to finance. 2459, matters laid over by Public Protection and Safety, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from Bear Essential Skin Care, requesting a two hour parking sign in front of the business. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I would make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the attached ordinance. Do you want to take the next document too? Sure, on that I would make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. And that ordinance is to add to the west side of South 11th Street from Virginia Avenue to New Jersey Avenue to the no parking period regulations. Correct? Correct. We have a motion before us, Alderman Horner. Yes, under discussion, Your Honor, on the first document, 2459, this is Barry Essentials on 8th Street and with uh, the entourage moving in and the added people in the area uh, for parking in that, in that area. Uh, Bear Essentials noticed that it was harder for some of their elderly patrons to park in front of the building and get in and out. And so we're going to add that area to the uh, two hour parking for daytime only or business hours so that Bear Essentials can, their elderly customers can get in there. And the committee 
thought it was a good idea. It only impacts about two parking spaces right in front of their place. Okay. And on the other one, that is an ordinance, uh, as you said, that uh, adds the west side of South 11th Street from Virginia to New Jersey Avenue to the no, no parking regulations. And in that instance, uh, police officer Melanie Schmidt has been working with Sheboygan Paper Box to address uh, the problem that's been created when Rockline employees park across from their loading docks. This, when the semis come in, they can't get in. And in working with Rockline, uh, they can't force their employees to use their parking lots. So they park on the street and, and keeps creating this problem. So rather than giving them tickets or, or asking them to move all the time, by adding this uh, to that area, the trucks will be able to get in for Sheboygan paper box. And the employees of Rockline have enough room in their parking lot to park. They may have to walk a little bit further, but they have park adequate parking lots built for them. So this will add that to the uh, no parking regulations. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, Pat? Mondamere? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Winfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manning? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2557 can be accepted and adopted. And that's I need a motion. I'm sorry. All in favor? Uh, I need a second. Oh, we have the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2558, resolution by Alderman Bauman amending the lease agreement with the Sheboygan Kennel Club for 2004 through 2008. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I promise this will be my last asking for suspension this evening. Sure. Is there any objections to suspension? Okay, Your Honor, the reason for a suspension on this one is the fact that the Sheboygan Kennel Club will be holding their annual dog show at the Municipal Service Building the end of this month. Their contract has been worked out so that we can actually give them a contract this year. And uh, from this point on, then, they will be holding their shows uh, the end of September rather than the end of April. So needless to say, um, that's why the reason was for suspension. So I then moved that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and seconded resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Bauman, one question. Maybe you can't answer it. I see David's here and Tom. Have we worked out the parking situation since we moved the recycling center over there? <sighs> I think Dave, Dave can answer that. Okay. Yeah, we, we met with representatives of the Kennel Club, and we're going to have some area on the back side that we'll be able to move some of our equipment around and provide the parking for them since the drop-off site is now on the east side of the building. So we've been working with them to accommodate that. Thank you, Dave. <coughs> okay. Do no other discussion? Pat, would you call the roll? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwil? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Resolution 2559, resolution by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Moody, Wangaman, and Vanderwil. Authorizing hiring outside legal counsel relative to the revocation of tavern license 2199 and 2181. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Suspend. Suspension. On that one, I need? I thought it was the next one. Okay. On that, uh, first I would ask for suspension. Exactly. Is there any objections to suspension? I'm surprised nobody's questioning this tonight with all this suspension, but go ahead and proceed. <laughs> It always happens in the council year. Proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a resolution that will authorize the city attorney to engage the services of special outside counsel for the Common Council and its Committee on Public Protection and Safety. In the matter of the hearing on the issue of revocation of the tavern license of Cesar Lozano, uh, license number 2199 and 2181, and authorizing payment for said services, Goes on to say, be it further resolved that the city finance director treasurer is hereby authorized and directed to draw on the city attorney's court legal judgment and settlements account number uh, in payment for said services. And I guess I would uh, just ask Steve if he could explain the reason, reasoning behind why we have to go to outside legal counsel for situations like this. Sure, uh, if those of you that have been on the council a while, 
I think, or where when uh, we hold license revocation or license suspension proceedings, uh, their adversarial proceedings, our office generally uh, prosecutes the case, uh, and there's case law that says our office can't both prosecute the case and also advise the counsel, who in effect is the jury or the uh, decision maker in the case. So what we've done in these circumstances the last few years is hired uh, uh, Joe Volkner from uh, the Olson Clowett firm uh, who uh, participates as, and, uh, during the proceeding and advises the counsel in the event that any legal issues come up for the counsel. That avoids uh, any due process problems in the license revocation proceedings. And there are cases that were, uh, I know a, a village ran into problems there where the city attorney tried to do both and they raised the due process objection and struck down the proceeding, said they had to do it over again. Uh, if I could, uh, uh, Your Honor, also this really ties into the next document. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have typically done in the past, what the council's done, is hold the, the hearings uh, before the entire council and hold them here at the council meeting, during the council meeting, uh, you know, with the council, uh, all, all them present as part of the regular council meeting. Uh, the statutes and our ordinances allow an alternative that a lot of municipalities utilize, uh, and that is for committee of the council to hold the hearing. And uh, this was discussed at Public Protection and Safety Committee, and they're recommending to the council that uh, this revocation proceeding be heard by the committee uh, in lieu of having the whole testimony in front of the whole council during the council meeting. Uh, it's thought that it'd be more efficient uh, it would be done, you know, you'd have five aldermen instead of 16 going through all this. Uh, it would, wouldn't be on a council night, so it wouldn't take up uh, an ordinate amount of time. And uh, this particular proceeding uh, is going to involve potentially five police officers as witnesses. Uh, and I'm not sure if the defendant will have witnesses as well, but it could be fairly involved. There's uh, 11 or 13 counts in the complaint. Uh, so it could be fairly lengthy in time. Uh, so the committee is recommending that the hearing be held in the committee. Now what the statutes and the ordinance provide for is the council is still the final decision maker. So the committee, after the hearing, prepares a report with the findings and uh, conclusions submits that to the council, also submits that to the, uh, uh, the complainant that's, uh, or the person uh, who has the license that is being requested to be revoked. And uh, that individual has an opportunity to file objections with the report that's submitted by the committee to the council. But then uh, it, that report gets submitted to the council and the council has an opportunity to uh, hear any objections that there might be, and then issues its determination based on the, the report. Uh, it's felt to be a more efficient process, and uh, I think the committee is recommending trying it, see how it works in relation uh, relative to uh, the, uh, the full quasi-judicial hearing before the whole council. Um, the, the timing of this is such that the uh, complaint went out and the complainant or the uh, license holder was notified that the hearing would be held at the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting next Tuesday, I believe, the 14th. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, the 14th. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if the council doesn't want to go that route, we can undo that, but uh, the way it's currently scheduled is that the, the license committee would hold a hearing next Wednesday uh, and submit their report then to the council at the next council meeting on the 19th, which would be the last council meeting of the year. Uh, so if there are any questions about the process or uh, 
about anything else in that regard. Alderman Stephan has one. Would add, right. Steve, that on, on that, yeah, that, that hearing part is going to be taped, and that tape then is going to be given to the county, and they're going to transcribe it. That's something they do to make sure that everything is perfect. So just a little added thing. Alderman Stephan. I guess that was my part of my concern was, you know, if I can see the logic in it, but <coughs> knowing how the court system works, once the person appeals, then we're all going to hear it again anyways, and I don't know if we've saved anything. I mean, do you anticipate that if the person appeals it, it will, it'll be much shorter than uh, it would be the first it time? Or? It's not an appeal, uh, Alderman Stefan. It's just they, uh, they're allowed to make an objection to any of the findings, specific findings that are in there, and you can then those findings or objections can either be in written form or verbal. So if they're in written form, then you could just look at them and render your decision. Even if they're verbal, it'd be a lot <laughs> shorter than going through the whole hearing. It would just, uh, they would be objecting to specific portions of the findings. Okay. And, and actually that is the next document, but that also, you know, when the Law and Licensing Committee comes online, that this function would be done by them, not public protection and safety. But in order to meet the term to have this done by the 14th, that's why it's happening in our committee. So it was something we did talk about in committee and thought would be useful because those people that are on that committee are trained through the licensing clerk in the specifics of the licensing function. They're probably uh, know a little more unless the rest of the council wants to attend those licensing meetings to, to, to learn everything there is about the licensing function than, than the general council. So that was the thought on that. But I guess first we have this one to uh, vote on and then the second one. So. Can you redo your, restate your motion to pass? You can do the so second, second one too? Right. It'll be clear. Okay, my first motion on 2559 is a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. And on 2560. Uh, no, do, do, let's do one okay. at a time. It'll be cleaner in my minutes. Sure. Second. Okay, we have a motion before us and seconded. Now, it's still under discussion. Hang on, Alderman Warner. Alderman Mooney has a question. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I probably should have asked this in committee. Um, oftentimes we call people in and they don't show up. If the, the parties involved here don't show up, then it would have to go to the new council, wouldn't it? Actually, I think uh, we have a, you have a lot of leniency. Uh, I shouldn't say leniency, you have a lot of uh, authority, I guess you would say, and, and the committee would probably feel if they don't show up, unless there was a proper legal appeal made for some reason, they actually have held off already mm -hmm. uh, from appearing in our so committee. So we can make a decision whether they're there or not, is that what uh, you're saying? That we would find out from the attorneys at the time, but I think it's possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> if there's no other questions or discussion, Pat, would you call? Alderman Warner, do you have something else you want to say? Otherwise, we'll call He's waiting for the next document. Okay. <laughs> okay. Would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2560. On this, Your Honor, I would make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Move to second to accept and adopt the report of committee on 2560. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this will allow uh, the, the hearing to be held in front of public protection and safety next week. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Other matters, Steve? 2561 is a communication from Dave Cook, Environmental Park Director of Maywood, requesting to hire temporary staff. That will go to Salon Grievance. 2562 is uh, an RO by the city clerk submitting a subrogation claim from Hawkeye Security Insurance on behalf of their insured Douglas Holty for alleged damages to his basement due to a sewer backup. That will go to Special, special Committee on Risk. Uh, I see another one of our new aldermen walked in, Bonnie Sirtis, here this evening with us also. Welcome, Bonnie. And if anyone looks at the business journal, in the March issue, Weisgerber's plans Weisgerber's Plan, Sheboygan Restaurant and Bar. It's a nice article in it. If anybody would want a copy of it, very nice. It tells all about the Harbor Center and restaurant down there. So, good to be Second. Move to second to adjourn. Under discussion. Oh, Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Closer. Aye.